The DC motor is a three-part example that will demonstrate why we would want to use both tools together. The first part of this example will show how you can run a simulation using only Simulink. I'll be working with an ideal op-amp in PSPICE that will be represented by an analog behavioral model, or basically a mathematical block of gain, to obtain an output waveform. The second part of this example will change the ideal op-amp into a real op-amp to view the waveform differences. Lastly, we'll add feedback resistance to the op-amp to correct these differences. I'll bring up the DC motor circuit from Capture. The project manager shows the controls that we'll be using. As you can see, it's an ideal block of gain similar to what you would find in a Simulink block. Next, I'll go to SLPS examples in MATLAB where I'll select the DC motor block. In the DC motor window, you see a picture of the capture design that represents an underlying model here which contains a SLPS block. Double-clicking the SLPS block brings up the SLPS settings window, which shows the links to our DC motor project, and here we can select our ideal model. With everything in order, I'll click OK and run the simulation. What we're seeing in the results window is our target rotor angular speed on the bottom, where we would ideally like to see a jump from 0 to 50. The top waveform displays our actual results from the code simulation, which shows that it initializes at the same two-second marker that our target waveform started. It has small overshoot, but it does settle at 50. If we wanted to, we could model this completely with Simulink to get the same result. I'll double-click on the Simulink model block, which will bring up a model of the DC motor done in Simulink. If we run this and take a look at the angular speed, you can see as I bring the graphs alongside each other that both the targets and output waveforms are virtually identical. Therefore, with the ideal models, we would be getting the same results whether it's PSPICE or Simulink. Using ideal components is of no benefit, so what we'll do in the next example is take these ideal components and modify them with electrical components. I'll return to Capture where I have my next controller, which is an actual op-amp device model. I'll go back to the DC motor circuit and double-click on the Capture design to bring up the SLPS block. Now I'll link the SLPS settings with my device circuit labeled device.cir and hit OK. Then I'll run the simulation. The results window displays and we notice some differences between our target and actual rotor angular speeds. Our target is still the same, however our output shows ringing at the one second interval as we're introducing our stator voltage. Also, the overshoot approach is 60 but we settled down around 50. Therefore, we're not getting the same output from this op-amp as we were from the ideal block of gain. Now, we see that putting electrical characteristics in this circuit gives us different results than we would expect. Errors such as these are often missed and could very well go unchecked into the prototype stage. The last part of this example will address how to solve such problems. Going back to capture for our last controller, we see the same circuit, only it has a 10 mega ohm resistance across the top to eliminate the ringing in the output and deliver some feedback. Once again, I'll go to the DC motor circuit and bring up the SLPS block where I'll link the settings window with the feedback circuit and hit OK. Now that that's done, I'll rerun the circuit again to see how the results differ. Taking a look at our new outputs, you can see that the ringing has been resolved. Our overshoot and output value remain the same, but with more adjustments can also be fixed. Overall, we saw why you would want to use both tools together. Simulink can only take you so far, but once you start using electrical models to simulate with your system, you're going to want to use PSPICE for the best results and solutions at the start of the design process.